friends, brothers, sisters, um, it is my pleasure to bring on to speak this evening. Um, someone that we deeply respect. I mean, I've heard his name from quite a lot of years back, even the times that there were the prayers for the nation that used to happen in Podakot over two and a half decades ago. Um, and he's been there. And um, so many people have known him for several decades. And um, I want to introduce him to you, even at this time. Um, he will be speaking on the topic, um, the church and the Christian health worker. Lessons from the pandemic and prospects for the future. Can I please, if you can stop that screen, I would want to share my screen. Dearly beloved brethren, in these times when every part of the society has been locked um, down, including the churches, apart from those who've been able to open, the health sector and health workers have been in the front lines and they've been battling increasingly um, with the response, what needs to happen. And um, we really, really need to engage with the churches more. I'm sure that from the video that we watched, all those platforms that were created were platforms through which evangelism could have been multiplied much more um, if we had deeper engagements. We also have real responsibilities with the churches as um, the government expects the churches to do certain things. We stand very much in the gap um, to defend many things in the church and to be involved in helping, in forming the bridge um, that supports the churches. Um, this session is going to expose the relationships that we have with the church, and we believe God is going to help ignite our hearts. Apostle Dr. Emmanuel Kure, Nuhu Kure, is an apostle and prophet with a burning desire matched by an exceptional anointing to prepare the church for the coming of Christ by ensuring that regions and peoples are fulfilling their divinely ordained mandate and impacting their spheres of influence. He graduated from the Bayer University and was a senior lecturer at the Kaduna State College of Education before resigning for full-time ministry. He's currently the National Secretary and member of National Advisory Board of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. He's a vision pioneer of Throne Room Trust Ministries, Kavanchan, Kaduna, which is a prayer and missions ministry with branches in Nigeria and several other nations. The ministry is involved in community health projects, youth training, scholarships, empowerment, and widows cooperatives. In addition, um, many may not be aware, there is a medical center at the Children Room Ministries headquarters there in Kafanchan. 2017, early 2017, I was there myself. I saw the center and um, we had an outreach together in that place and in Kavanchan, um, sponsored by the Shon Room Ministries. And it has been a tremendous blessing. I want to mention, ladies and gentlemen, to those who may not be aware, several years ago, in fact, several years ago, Apostle Kure reached out to CMD in Nigeria and said, can you just come over and support us to and work with us to grow this medical center? And that has been several years. We were not ready. We're probably very ready now. And friends, there are so many other things about Apostle Kure. Um, we're going to share that even with us. Being chairman of the advisory council of Wailing Women Worldwide, um, which one of our board of trustees members, Dr. Um, Okafor, Benjamin Okafor and his wife Lide, who is um, right, who is there, who is one of our BOT members, 
um, they have been very much involved in driving. Um, and he's also Chairman Salama Radio 98.1 FM, National Advisor, Women Are Glow International, Board Member, Redeemer University, is a board member, Nigerian Coalition of Apostles, and um, he's well sought out, he's, he's got his written books, God's Chosen Leader, Apostolic Invasion, Practical Prophetic Prayer and Warfare, and um, his marriage is he's married to Pastor Mata Kure and is blessed with five beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to welcome Pastor Kure. Okay. Praise, Praise the Lord. Sir, you can, you can uh -huh. go on now, sir. Mm. Thank you very much. I want to say that it's a privilege to be amongst you. For the last 20 minutes that I joined you, I have been so impressed that words cannot describe how I feel. Especially reading and following some of the work you are doing all over the country and the great sacrifices of your teams, uh, I feel very, very, very humbled especially when in this time when many people are doing everything to save their own lives and stay safe. Uh, I salute every one of you in the front lines. We thank God for your lives. And I want to tell you, you are not alone. God will never leave you alone. Uh, because without you, um, this crisis cannot be defeated. I want to say, first of all, that the work of the medical worker, I mean, the, the work of those of you in the medical field uh, is a redemptive one. Uh, whether you are born again or not, if you signed in into anything that is connected to health, you are a redemptor. Uh, you carry the ministry of the Messiah. Uh, Jesus himself was called the great physician. And I want to say you belong to the order of Melchizedek. And what you do is divine. And only God himself can and will reward you for what you are doing. Um, I want us for a moment, please, to just bow our heads and pray for those in the front line right now. These ones that are risking their lives every day, exposing themselves, not just to the virus, but sometimes are not even appreciated. Uh, sometimes they even face antagonism from those they want to save, those they want to help. Can we bow our heads and ask the Lord to remember them and ask the Lord to help them and ask the Lord to raise a standard on our behalf and ask the Lord to comfort and to strengthen them. Those of them that are already giving up, let the Lord heal their hearts. Let the Lord provoke them again into, be, be, into becoming excited doing what they are doing. My father arise in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every taunting spirit that will not allow your children walk without complaints. Without, we rebuke every buffeting spirit. Lord, we release the spirit of joy into their hearts. We defend them with the blood of Jesus. We invoke the power of that blood, not just to sustain them and keep them alive after they have saved other people, 
but Lord, to secure them and secure their families. That while they are saving others, their families will be saved. Lord, we pass a decree today that it shall not be spoken, that any doctor with your covenant carrying the mark of the blood becomes a casualty in this season, in this fight against COVID-19. In the name of Jesus Christ, every doctor and medical personnel, nurses and their assistants and all those associated to COVID-19 that are already in trouble, we call for the Son of God to enter into that place with them and bring them out of that infirmity and that pain. We speak healing to their lives and their bones, and we command the redemptive work in the blood of Jesus to set them free from their afflictions. Thank you, Holy Father. Today, I ask that you will provide for the needs of them that have need in this hour and that you will heal our health workers. Please, Lord, encourage them. Please, Lord, sustain them. Please, Lord, unto the end, raise men that will change the story, this story and will bring redemption to the nations of the earth. Thank you for the wisdom that is bringing vaccines this, this time, that is creating vaccines for this disease. Thank you for the cures that you have already brought that have been downloaded into the lives of men right now. Thank you for the lives that are developing these cures. We ask that you set a protection around them all over the world and that by the end of this year, the world will begin to rejoice. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to say thank you again for um, this uh, privilege. Let me tell you something. The work of the doctor is like, or the work of the doctor needs the wisdom of God. I want to read Daniel chapter 5, verse 11. Daniel chapter 5, verse 11. Because in that scripture, God opened my eyes to see a few things. And I want to give you a little background. And I want to ask God for help that within this 30 minutes, 45 minutes, he will bless us and he will encourage us. In Daniel chapter 5 verse 11, the scripture says, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. I want you to note those words. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Listen, doctors, are the people with the wisdoms of the gods. They are the ones with creative activity, I mean, creative abilities to give life and sometimes to take away life. They are like the mini gods that God, or they are like the gods God has created amongst gods or among human beings. Because the Bible says, know ye not that you are all gods. So doctors are like gods. They have the wisdom of God. And it means in them is the ability to do anything, create anything. And that's why doctors are striving right now to even create human beings all over the world because they want to be at par 
with God. Now, this is to underscore the divine ability you have within you that you are not using a tenth of yet. Times like these are beginning to ask us to go back into our innermost being, into our innermost beings, back into creation and dig out the creative abilities God has given us in order to find cures, not just for this pandemic, but for any other disease that will come hereafter. Why? Because the wisdom of the gods is given to doctors, is given to all health workers. So the first thing I want to let you know is that the years to come, men and women will rely on you for redemption. And the Messiah, if you will allow him, will be your leader in discovering things that eyes have not seen or ears had. If you allow God just use that your fertile mind, he will create and call into being those things that be not, as though they were already there, because he has already created the cure for every disease before the disease came. Have you not read in the Bible that with every temptation, every temptation that cometh to man is a doorway of escape, meaning that even this with this pandemic, there is a cure. There is a doorway of escape that is waiting for a man to discover it. So one of the first prayers I want all of us to pray today, this is a conference. I want us to lift up our hands and ask the Lord to release upon us the wisdom of the gods. Daniel had that gift and kings and nations, times and dispensations depended on him. You know, it's like the gift to the sons of Issachar. You know, they did not understand the times. They had solutions for the times. And if Daniel, as an individual being, had the wisdom of the gods to unveil times and heal situations and give directions, and God has told me that every doctor can assess that same gift. Today, I release the power of that gift upon your head and I remove every humanity that has limited you, including the distractions in your life and in your families. I rebuke those distractions. These are the days of the priesthood of the health workers. I want to repeat, these are the days of the priesthood of the health workers. And in their case, they are supposed to be developing divine abilities that are beyond their fellows. Why? Because the creator himself lives inside of them and he is their God. And if the creator is your God, every void that has shut down your revelation in your spirit, every distraction, I come against those distractions. I prophesy against them in the name of Jesus Christ. By you, every cure will come for every disease that is released against man. Don't you know that we are already in the days in Revelations chapter 9 and in the book of Revelations when Satan, and of course God himself, brought every kind of plague and affliction upon the earth against man in order to reorder the earth and make the earth fulfill prophecy. Don't you know also that if you look at Obadiah and other minor prophets, that the Bible says saviors will arise in our time. Saviors, saviors, saviors. That means they will have the mentality of the Messiah, the anointing of the Messiah, the promptings of the Messiah, the instincts of the Messiah, the heart of the Messiah, the compassion of the Messiah, to be able to work out the miracles that are needed for their generations and for their appointed times. 
I want every doctor, every nurse, every health worker, whether you are an ophthalmologist or you, 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 you are a dentist, I don't care whether you are a technical assistant or a health assistant, you need to begin to ask God to open the windows of heaven. The, the secrets of God are with those that fear him. You need to ask him to open the secrets of God unto you as to the cure, the ways of escape for the afflictions that have come upon the earth. Side by side and hand by hand with healing the people, reaching out, showing compassion, the cure is inside of you. You need to invoke God to make your senses come alive, to begin to dream dreams, see visions, because we are in the days of Daniel and the Isaka generation, whether you are a doctor, whether you are a priest, except you have the wisdom of the gods, you cannot survive this season. So I want you to set yourself on the pedestal of God. Can you enter into the place where God dwells so you can begin to operate in his wisdom? I call for the spirit of God to, dwell, to draw you into that place and to rebuke that humanity that limits you, that lack of confidence, that hesitancy. You know, you hesitate. You feel there are better doctors. No, it is unknown doctors that will bring the miracles of this season. Phinehas was not known. He held back the hand of the Lord from destroying a whole nation. Ah, Joshua was always hiding under the rock and in the shadows, following his master from the shadows. And when the choice of a leader to enter Canaan land came, the man who was nobody, in fact, the man was from Africa. Many of you don't know Joshua came from Africa. Joshua in your Bible, came from Africa. He is the son, is the son of Joseph's wife. Joseph's wife. That woman who was an Egyptian, whose father was a magician, whose father served Baal, a priest of Baal. Can you imagine Joshua coming from that depth? to lead Israel into the central purpose of God. He was nobody. May God find a Joshua amongst you that will heal our waters. I am praying today, I'm using this contact, not just for now, but for the things that will come upon the earth after now, because this is just the beginning. I repeat, this is just the beginning. God told me, and let me tell you sincerely, that this pandemic, is a test run. It's not from the pit of hell. Any Christian who tells you that, or any other demon who tells you that, it's a lie. I speak as a prophet, as one that has waited on the Messiah to see him come. You know, for many years we have been preaching the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know he's following a program. And we don't know that the program has begun now. Let me tell you, the next 10 years will unfold the, the, the reality, the fullness of the Messiah. The next 10 years are not ordinary years. They are going to come not from the pit of hell, but from the heart of heaven. Starting from 2020 to 2030, they are transition periods of the remaking of the whole world, the reordering of the whole world, the resetting of the whole world, especially the first three years of this decade. How do I know this? Look, I am into a lot of dreams and visions and I've been dreaming and seeing visions since I got born again in 1975, December. From 76 April, I began to receive revelations about times to come, the time to come, things that had never happened. The fall of the USSR, I saw it long before it came. I wrote a book on it or a magazine on it, and it came to pass. The rise of Netanyahu, the rise of Putin, I prophesied all those, they came to pass. The coming of Trump, in fact, I was almost delisted when I prophesied also the coming of Barack Obama from the International Coalition of Apostles, I was asked to be delisted and to be removed as a false prophet, except that Peter Wagner, 
the late Peter Wagner, for those of you who don't know, he's going to be with the Lord now. But the late Peter Wagner, who is one of my international mentors, had to intervene and stop them because he had found out that every word the Lord had spoken by me had come to pass. My friend, we are in times that are already foretold, times and seasons that God from heaven is engineering to reintroduce the Messiah into the center of things. Those who don't know him will know him. Those who have not seen him, we see him eye to eye. Holy Father, I invite you today, even so come quickly, even so go into the deeper waters and remove the veil that men may know that you rule in the kingdoms of men. Men may know that you are their beginning and their end. Men may know that the last days and the end times are come. Especially these our doctors, that Lord, they will conform to your destiny for their lives and they will fulfill their destiny. None of them will be a castaway. I prophesy that, I command that, and I rebuke every buffeting spirit that will not let you be that will not let you enter into your purpose. I don't care whether you are the religious type or not. If you are in on this program, I release you into the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill your destiny, your destiny for the sake of humanity so that God might reign on earth, so that God might have a place to rule. I want us to listen and listen very carefully. Last year, Right from earlier in the year, like I first started prophesying about next year already, I started last month, telling them, preparing the body of Christ about the coming year. But that was how last year, by the middle of last year, I started telling them that this year, one, this year is the end of a cycle. Every 10 years is the end of cycle. And it opens another cycle. 2020 is the end of a cycle and the opening of a new cycle of 10 years. So 2020 is not an ordinary year. You go to the astrologers, they will tell you this particular 2020 is not an ordinary year. Go to the Hebrew rabbis, they will tell you this year is not an ordinary year. For three years, I have been warning us about the end of these 10 years and the next 10 years to come. And then last year, God did something. God told me to go out and my main text for this year, when I went, there were three of them, I won't give you the other two, but let me just tell you the one that affects us because we are in a season of siege, spiritual and physical. And I want to tell you something, God has allowed this siege so that he can change the foundations of the earth and bring forth a new foundation so that he can reset the programs of God, of men. Listen, during this season, because God told me everything that he, he said he will go into the roots and he will begin to remove the roots that has deviated the destinies of the nations of the earth from the direction that we are preordained for them. So it means that if there is a root in your father's house that has already deviated the destiny of your family line and you are now alive as a continuation of that family line. I am prophesying and calling upon the Lord to interfere in the direction you are going now and correct it and bring it back to the place and the destiny that your family was meant to fulfill and I mean to, 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 to fulfill in this earth before Christ come. You will become the first apostle of your family to fulfill destiny the way God planned it in Jesus' name. Let this 10 years develop a spirit of its own around you to divert you to fulfill prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are hurting, I rebuke that hurt. I command that chain to break away from you and release you to fulfill your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I release that prayer to all of mankind and all of humanity. Wherever a fulfiller of prophecy is, anything that is as an entanglement that has disallowed them to fulfill their destiny, I challenge them under God and I bring the judgment of God against that thing in Jesus' name. So today I have come to prophesy. I have come 
to just show you the ways of the Lord. There was a time I was saying, I was telling them that the days are coming when the first people to find the cure for every disease will be the church. They will be Christians. And people didn't believe me. A few believed me. I remember there is a doctor in our research center here, you know, disease control, whatever they call it, here in Abuja, who tried to reach me. I won't call her name here, but who tried to reach me because I told them that I have seen the cure for HIV AIDS. It's there and a Christian is going to mix it up. Now, look, okay, now that I'm talking to medical people, have you not noticed that the first set of people to announce that they have a breakthrough in this COVID-19 fight and are developing some kind of medications that their company is called Gilead in the United States of America. Gilead, Gilead, Gilead. Do you know the meaning of the word Gilead? It means the hip, the heap of testimonies, the heap of testimonies. And when you look at physicians and balm in the Bible, always balm, the balm of Gilead, balm is always associated to that name Gilead. They carry balm, they carry healing. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm for every disease within our covenant as a church and as Christians, all the Lord needs to do is open the eyes of your understanding that you may see, that you may connect to the cure and to the healing. And that's why I want to command every one of you, before you touch any human being from now, because some diseases are from hell and some people you are dealing with is Satan who has afflicted them. Before you open up anybody in the theater, can you raise a cry unto the Lord who knows the part of the body and ask him to guide your hand in that operation? Never rush to do anything anyhow anymore before you get trapped. Before Satan begins to accuse you. Before Satan begins to make you feel every time you enter the theater, pray. If your team are not Christians, you pray your own prayer. You have to say, oh God, in the name of Jesus, where is the balm of Gilead? Where is the great physician? Let him go before me into this body and bring healing. You will find out that you will not do much in that body, but healing will come to that body. I release that as your testimony from now, that a silent helper will be there to help you each time you are in contact with patients. And that from now henceforth, your success testimony will be 100% in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that has been said to accuse the church in the systems, we call a buffeting spirit from heaven to buffet those things in your structures. Anything that undermines your ability, we rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus Christ. God told me that our doctors will be the cities of refuge. You are a city of refuge. In this time when men are confused, do you know in Kafanchan now, people who even want to die, they know they are sick unto death. The last place they want to die from is our hospital, the Salem Hospital, our clinic. They ask to be taken there because they know the last man that will touch them is holy and true. They know that the last man that will touch them will pray for them. So they said, take us to throne room. If we die, we know it's the will of the Lord. If we don't die, the Lord is in throne room. He will raise us from these difficult situations. And God has shown us mercy. Most of them rise up and walk hereafter. Today, let that miracle follow you into your hospital, into your clinic, whether you are a private person or you work with government in the name of Jesus. Let the other doctors see the mystery of the wisdom of the gods because the spirit of the gods is upon you like it was with Daniel. You need to connect with the spirit of the gods. Take that Daniel 5 11 seriously. You will see that they were even referring to his fathers. 
Number two, before I read these other scriptures, I wanted to read about now so I don't get carried away about the times and the seasons. Christian doctors are, the Lord told me to tell you, if I to command those of you who can hear, especially the more senior ones, those who are into research, those who are still passionate about what they are doing, medicine, not those who are tired. But Christians must begin to develop greenhouses of herbs. <laughs> herbs, herbs. Greenhouses of herbs. That means plant your own herbs in your backyard instead of okra and vegetables. If you are a doctor, Raise a garden of herbs. The herbs you find in these places, raise your own garden, local gardens of herbs, and start experimenting with them. You are not a herbalist. You are a doctor. You, you, you are a Western educated doctor. Can you put into practice some of those things? Go get the seeds. It all starts with the seed. The seed of the woman will do this. It all starts with the seed, the seed. If you go to Genesis chapter one, it didn't start with tablets. It started with seeds. There were trees that gave life. Even if there was a tree in the, king, in the garden that was called the tree of life. Seeds. When I started preparing for this, God showed me things that frightened me. I had to ask for grace to speak to you. God I told, God asked me, he said, have you ever imagined why Ahab desperately wanted the garden of Naboth? Naboth was a righteous man. Naboth was a holy man. And because he was holy and righteous, listen, because this is very, very important. Because he was holy and what? righteous. It meant God was in his guardians. There was something special. If you look at Ahab, the reason why he wanted to take that garden, even if it meant murder, that was why he raised men. Naboth is the only one that before they killed, they killed him, they had to raise three men to fast and pray. It's there in your Bible. They raised three men to fast and pray in order to kill Naboth, Naboth, Ahab, and Jezebel, raise three men to fast and pray. Don't you think there is something mystical about that place? But if you look at that scripture, in that book of Kings, the Bible says, I think it's First Kings 21 verse two, the Bible says that Ahab wanted to turn it into a garden of herbs. Herbs, herbs. He was going to kill a human being, take his whole estate. He was not going to build anything in it, but grow herbs. Herbs there was not vegetable, so now medicine. Medicine. How many of you doctors have a garden of herbs in your backyard? I want that new revolution. Let's break away from the normal, from the orthodoxy. Let's get into the unorthodox. Unorthodox, unorthodox. Like somebody put that scripture there and he said, and aha, can you put back that scripture? I just saw it on the screen now. You know, look, aha, asked Naboth for his land. And the reason given there is to make a garden of herbs. And God said, some of these secrets are hidden for the last days. They were kept for you, for our generations, so that we can begin to enter into realms our fathers never entered into. We can begin to discover things that others could not discover. The church is supposed to be one step ahead of the rest of the world. The Christian medical man is supposed to be one step ahead. Whether your specialty is ears, you are supposed to be one step ahead. When nobody could treat my left eye and I was to lose the left eye completely, I was taken from one country to the other. In the first place, the mistake on that eye was made in Great Britain. 
at Victoria End by a professor that is well renowned. He made the first mistake on that eye and there was no cure anymore. I went hospital to hospital. I got to the US, went to Colorado Springs. There are specialists there. Everywhere I went, they will take me to the theater. Once they want to begin and they make a last check, they reject me. Consultants, I'm not talking about ordinary doctors. Then there was this Ghanaian, one man. He is one of their most senior medical personnel in Florida. He is one of the who is who in the eye area. Dr. Apia. He's still practicing. Eye consultants, Tallahassee. Listen, because it's very important. When he looked into the eye, that part of the eye, that specialty, he said there were only eight of them at that time that specialized in that area. And he was one of them. He is not only born again, he's a Ghanaian. His family is born again. He lives by the grace of the son of God. And when he told me he is able to do it, we had prayed and God gave me a peace, he will do it. That man got three other doctors, all of them eye specialists in different places because the nerves and the blood, whatever veins had already interwound and become one. How to unwind them was going to be a problem to be able to solve that problem. And the inner side of the eye, the back side of the eye had been damaged completely. So it was a serious matter. That doctor by the wisdom of God in a four and a half hour operation, two hours of being completely knocked out and the remaining hours of being partially alive and awake, where they were shouting on me not to bat my eye, not to move something, not to do this. They were the most fearful hours of my life, even as a priest, even with Boko Haram in my backyard, I have never been afraid like that. And those doctors by the skills of the Lord repaired that eye. Ah! May a miracle worker listening to me be born amongst you. May something snap in the world because you were born. May the stars of heaven rejoice for the day you decided to practice medicine of any kind. There are saviors amongst us. People with the wisdom of the gods. Wisdom of the gods. You need to start crying, Lord. He said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Where is that secret in you? That's my cry in this season. Lord, don't allow this place come until you have raised the priesthood that can see clearly and understand it. So that just like Goshen and the rest of Egypt, there will be a place, there will be a path that cannot be afflicted, that are saved from the plagues. Why? Because the Messiah dwells there with them. Because the Messiah is their God. Can you begin to think outside the box concerning COVID-19? When I heard that Gilead had started, and I hear now that they have a vaccine, let me tell you, part of the prophecy I gave was that people said this thing will be with us for a long time. And I told them it's not going to be there for a long time. Have you not seen something to let you know it's coming from on high? That the command and the control center for COVID-19 is with the World Health Organization, far away from Nigeria. And every government of the earth obeys them now. So the government we have in the earth right now, like the one world government that will come, is in Geneva or wherever the World Health Organization headquarters is. When they say don't sleep, every doctor does not sleep. They say, uh, who said we should not sleep? Oh, hydrochloroquine or whatever they call them is good. Everybody is testing it. Oh, it is bad, stop. Everybody stops like zombies. Don't you know it's a test case of the days of the Antichrist to come? Have you really read your Bible thoroughly? The days of the one world government. Don't you know that the one world government, the leader of the one world government will use supernatural powers, that he will have his powers from the dragon. In fact, the Bible says he will even have powers to heal. 
He would be a healer. His own wounds, the cut in his wounds, will heal suddenly, magically. And the Bible says the whole earth will follow him. We are in the days of mysteries. Even the diseases are mysteries. Have you not noticed that this COVID-19 is, like is, like, is like the Holy Spirit or a spirit? Nobody now is too sure as to how it is transmitted. Now they are about to divide husbands and wives from sleeping in the same bedroom because they said the thing is hanging in the air now. So even in this bedroom where I'm speaking to you now, this office space where I'm speaking to you now in my own house, I cannot stay close to my wife because the spirit of COVID-19 is hanging in the air and no eye can see. Nobody can explain it. You see a human being that has it as if it is a demon. A human being that has it, you don't know he has it. He's not exhibiting symptoms. Meanwhile, he will make somebody else sick, exhibit the symptom, and even die without him exhibiting it. Is that not demonic? Is that not spirit? So to deal with it, it has to be dealt with spiritually. Many of you have to go back and ask for the wisdom of the gods. Then the eyes of your understanding will be opened that you may see. Then the skills of your hands. The apostles prayed unto the Lord in the book of Acts that you should cause that by our hands, signs and miracles might happen. They didn't say by our brains. They said our hands. They must have also thought of medical doctors and physicians and nurses because everything you do is by your hands, the work of your hands. You need to pray, you need to look wherever you are, can you stretch your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, like the apostles in the Acts of Apostle, cause that by my hand, signs and miracles for my generation will begin. Whether medically or spiritually, I want to be a miracle worker. Every Christian medical man must become a miracle worker. And I impute that on, into you. I impact that into you. I command the spirit of revelation into your, into, into your life. Ahab. Ahab. There are many vineyards. Lusted after only one. And what was his only reason? Because of that one, he was very sick. Is to build a garden of herbs. That means like the Garden of Eden, there was a tree of life in Naboth's vineyard. Only Ahab saw it. Don't you know it's speaking to us? The Lord began to open my visions. When Moses was to start building anything, they went for Benzalil. And the Bible says, for the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Hey, that the spirit of the Lord will be upon you. That he will wake you by night. He will make you sing songs. He will give you strength. You will try. Yes, some of the inspirations may fail, but they may become medicine for another thing. I like Professor Iwu. Is it Iwu? The former INET chairman. The cure he is trying to bring, or the medicine he is trying to bring to the table, was from a former experiment he had made in their labs there in the East on SARS, S A R S. I'm sure you are more familiar with those things. On SARS, it was what they had done and frozen that the guy is resurrecting now and presenting to Nigeria as cure. And Nigeria will not even listen to him. Rather, America decided to test anything that can bring a cure by collecting it from him. My friend, can we break from the ordinary? In those hospitals where you are handling COVID-19 patients, ask God for revelation. Is there some harmless counsels you can give outside the normal who's direction, WHO? You know, who? Who is not the name of anybody. Who? Who said that? Who is there? Is not the name of anybody. He is a faceless spirit, too. But you, you are a covenant child. You went to school. You are an oracle of God. God taught you medicine. He made you skilled like Benzalim. And according to the scripture, in these last days, our skilled men, there will be none like them in all of the earth. Can you imagine? Do you know that Gilead, 
that Gilead, the, the, the research institute or the research group that is handling this COVID-19, do you know they carry the covenant of the Jews? Do you know it's owned by Jews? The same Yahweh. Can't you see the connection in prophecy? The balm of Gilead speaking to a generation. Now, let me conclude uh, because I don't have all the time today and just pray with you. I won't pretend that I'm going to solve all, 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 all the problems. But the truth is that Nigeria has no program as to how to combat COVID-19. Most nations of the earth have left it to who? And to prophet Trump. Note, I call Trump prophet. He's the one who believed by faith and proclaimed by faith that before the end of this year, America will have a cure. They called him madman. Now, even Fauci, his chief physician in charge of COVID-19, told him it was not possible. Now, Fauci with his mouth, a few weeks ago, proclaimed that it was possible that by the end of the year, they will have that. Where, why will God take Forgive my choice of language. Take what we call non-entities, mad people, and proclaim the realities of the spirit. When we specialists, the Bible says, who is as blind as my servant? We, the specialists, cannot see beyond our nose. All we see is hopelessness and helplessness. I break that veil of the devil in this season. It will not affect us as a church. It will not chain us like other people. Gilead has a Jewish ancestry, Jewish roots, DNA. And now they are bringing some of the first verses. And suddenly, when they said they can make their own ready by December, I hear, is it Paisa you call it? And all the others are beginning to claim they to have a cure. I have been following the medical field. Because I wanted to see whether the prophecies I prophesied will also come to pass. And now they are all claiming the, like, the likelihood of a vaccine before by December that will start going around all over the world by January and February is very possible. It means the life of the world is about to go back to normal. It means what I said, that this was a short thing. It's a test run from heaven to warn the earth and reawaken the earth and tell the earth that the Lord is taking charge. And God told me that during this COVID-19, that he will remove key people, central people, that are the reason why we cannot turn around and move in the new direction. Everybody that is a peg, that disallows us to shift and change into the direction of God. COVID-19 is like that Passover spirit that went over Egypt. It's going to find all of them and remove them. And I prophesied here in Abuja at our national prayer alt altar in Kubwa that the Lord said he's starting from the presidency, right inside the president's office and authority and purview. He will remove the ancient landmarks there that symbolize our inability to shift. And we know what happened. I know you are transmitting this all over, but we know what happened. The chief of staff died. And the chief of staff had just been given superpowers to rule this nation by the president. And like they say, man, whatever, and God disposes. Man proposes and God disposes. And the rock of ages who spoke, I prophesied this in March, and I gave them a testimony of three months. And I said, by the third month, watch, the world will begin to reopen again. I didn't say there will be a cure. I said the world will reopen this lockdown three months. By June, the world will begin to reopen. It came to pass exactly as I spoke it. Why? Because last year, from the middle of last year, the Lord began, the Lord gave us this key scripture, Jeremiah 15, verse 2 and 3. 
The Bible says, and it shall come to pass. If they say unto thee, whither shall we go forth? Where is the future? Where are we going to? What is our direction? Prophesying about the future. He said, you will answer. Then thou shalt tell them, thus say the Lord, such as for dead are for dead to dead. And God said, this year was going to be that highway that this scripture is talking about. He said, Samuel and all the prophets, if you go to verse 1, even though they prayed, God will not answer them. Go and take our tapes. I mean, if I'm telling you like now, we manufacture tapes for many moons and keep in the ministry. They are there from September last year when we, 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 we celebrated the Israeli New Year for this season. And God said, those, he said, don't say the Lord, such are for death to death, such as are for the sword to the sword. That is why you see so much criminality going on. And such as are for famine to famine, and such as are for captivity to the captivity. And he said in verse three, I will appoint over them four kinds, say the Lord, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heavens, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. Listen. So I told people this year, many people are going to die. And some of them will die for no just reason, but that God is going to shake the foundations. Those of you who were with us in the crossover in Kafanchan, that everybody is talking about now, but Kafanchan, the crossover. Suddenly, I stopped midway into my preaching and I started a lamentation on China. Everybody was there, had that. Even I cannot explain why I was lamenting. I said, Ah, oh, China, they are entering into the most horrible year the year of the rat. Rat brings diseases. I began to lament. I said, The year of the rat. Oh, China, oh, China. Even me, after that meeting, I felt very odd and misplaced and disjointed. Because suddenly there was a lamentation and there was China. And now this disease came from China or started from China. They claim that part of its history is connected to America from the labs in America that were shut down and transferred to China that were developed further. And in God's appointed time, the thing escaped and began to deal with human beings. Don't be deceived that this is the hand of Satan. It's the hand of the Lord trying to reorder the foundations of the earth. And look, go and read your Bible. Before this world was created, its destiny had been ordained. Its destiny had been ordained. And that's why today, if there is anybody peradventure, even in the hospitals, listening to me under the stroke of this COVID-19, my father, I ask you as a special gift tonight, losing them from that imprisonment. You said, we will bring people out of prisons. I stretch your holy hand and I break the yoke of the cross going through your body wherever you are. And I command that disease ravaging you now to break off in Jesus' name. I command that fever to break off in the name of Jesus. And I call you forth to begin to recover and to heal. You shall not die but live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want somebody to say amen to that. God is doing a new thing in our time. God is doing a new thing in our time. And we need to see the hand of God in this. God told me that he's going to bring this abruptly to an end. And when God speaks like that, give us one more year and COVID-19 will become like HIV. People are no longer afraid of it like they used to be. 
Normally, within one year span, prophecies have a way of fulfilling themselves and running over. But God said the church must begin to take advantage of these first 10 years. I mean, these first three years of the 10 years, three years, to rebuild where they have lost it, to, to repair everything that has been scattered. Give yourself new foundation. That is what I mean. If you are in the wrong place, change the place for another place. But give yourself new foundation. Build the foundation within these three years. Because anybody without foundation, God said he will give the earth seven years after. If the earth does not repent within seven years, even from now, if the earth does not begin to show the signs that they are shifting away from the old into the new, it's not that the whole earth must serve God. That is not what God is saying. But they must, the earth must be resituated in the place of prophecy. And in the place of prophecy, there were evil and good. But every evil that happened fulfilled prophecy. Every good that happened fulfilled prophecy. Like in the days of Pharaoh. The earth as it is now is not doing that. The earth is a free fall. It's just going like that. But no longer shall it be a free fall. Everything will work together for good for God's divine purpose. So what God is doing this time is recalling every destiny he has written for each one of us to begin to impose themselves in our time and season and help us fulfill our purpose, whether good or bad. So you must be careful to go seek God's face to separate you from the evil and set you upon your highway. Let me say lastly, because I just noticed that my time is up. Lastly, every medical worker must every month, not in church, eh? go get unleavened bread. Break communion for yourself and your family every month. Still break the one in the church, but this one, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This one is a marking of the Lord for your house by the blood of his sacrifice, because we are going through a season of Passover. So every doctor, every nurse, every assistant, medical, technical person, every health administrator, I speak as a prophet. Don't call a pastor to break bread from your family. Make, when I say unleavened bread, it's simply uh, bread without yeast. Don't add yeast to it. Uh, you can put margarine, you know, to soften it, but you get the flour, add somebody bread without yeast. It becomes kosher. The Jews eat covenant bread without yeast. Break that bread. Tell the Lord by it. Let him not only renew covenant, but let him hide you in his secret place because of the evil of the times. Two, let him open up the gifts that are hidden that I had not seen, that even you didn't know you had. Every doctor needs to open his inner own mind. Let God release the blessings that are there that have not been discovered even by the owner. I beg you, don't become proud when suddenly you begin to catch visions, inspirations. Some of you will need to dream. While somebody is talking, you will catch a key. There was a man I watched on television talking I think it was TVC. The boy was so brilliant about this COVID-19 that I asked myself, why is the government not capturing this boy to join their team of researchers to, 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 get, to, to get solution for this? Our problem has to do with vision, visionless leaders. Two, yes, we have COVID-19. They are supposed to get a committee that will study it and domesticate it and decide how Nigerians can beat it outside the WHO instruction. The WHO instruction will be instructive. But can Nigeria domesticate the WHO instruction to make it effective in the marketplace? The church is not the problem. It's not head and talk. Open churches and it will spread like wildfire. It's already spreading in the marketplaces. Kaduna State open churches. Come to our place. We have a thousand people or we, we, because of our hall. Our hall can take 7,000. We decide to have 1,500 coming in, all spaced up with the mask. 
lifting holy hands unto the Lord. We are keeping it. The people who will catch it from my congregation might most likely catch it from the market, not from our place. But because we have a covenant with God, even in the market, it will not touch them in Jesus' name. The government is supposed to bring a program for the market. So if some of you who are listening to me are in government and in the health sector of the government federal level, and you have access to those who are making these decisions, can they get a think tank that decides what to do with the markets? I'm not saying shut them down. But the same control you are bringing to the churches, be very, 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 take those controls there so that we can solve this problem. Having said all of this, please go and build a garden of house. Please, you will forgive me. Listen. Begin to build hospitals that will become cities of refuge. Write it down. God ordained that there are doctors who should build places that will save people from the diseases of the future. I call our Nigerian doctors, including our medical associations. Can we try start building our own reference centers that will operate by a different law, like that Gilead place, and operate by the laws of the Holy Spirit? Do our research. Thank you very much, sir. And um, thank you everyone on the screen. There is uh, um, a line that is there. Please feel free, is wholly dedicated to and very, um, um, very well um, um, protected. Please, there is an opportunity. You may be here. There are over 400 of us. You may be here and you've never really made a decision for Christ. Don't miss the opportunity. Send the message to that number, your name, and repent. Or you've actually been wounded. Please don't miss the opportunity. Send your name and revive. And also that what is needed is sharpening, sharpening. Please send the message to that number with your name and refresh, a WhatsApp number or SMS. Please on the mountain of the Lord, let's not um, forget, you know, the main thing that we need to do. Let the commitment be made. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So friends, um, there's so much that has been said. Um, Dr. Ladiko that just shared with us is a chairman of the local organizing committee for this conference, and also the chairman of the um, ICC committee for um, the COVID response for CMDA Nigeria. And um, it's been a pleasure having you. I need to make some quick announcements, uh, some quick statements before we close. A lot has been said. A lot has been said. Please remember where we are on the mountain um, of experience at this time. Um, just to strengthen it. At the Nelson Mandela lecture um, of the UN Secretary General last week, just last week, he made a profound statement that our world is our breaking point and he called for a new global deal, a new social contract, a new order, something new to reverse this. And then he added, now we are seeing the beginning of a new movement and it rejects inequality and divisions, unites young people, society, private sector, cities, and pol behind policies for peace, human rights, justice. It is making a difference. Just to remind you again and to link it with what has been said now, this is what he presented as a symbol of that new movement. And I want us, we must pay attention and tie it to even the prophetic things that have been said today and the understanding that the world has changed. The UN Secretary General is calling for something very new, a new order. And we know who uses this symbol and we know who was doing what on this street. And it calls to question many things. Since 
there is a lot that has been said even tonight. I want us to prepare for the evening, for tomorrow, um, and get ready as God unpacks the dimensions of our response. We have been molded too much by the world, too much by science, too, world, too much by our medical careers, too much that we so fit into the world and so justify all the stories that are told. Even though inside our hearts, we know that truth is still not outside there. Nothing is true, but then we're out there so molded that we defend even what we don't know. Friends, we should not be too molded to be available for God to use us for the decade that is here. 39th of December 2019, CMDA, we declared the coming decade as a decade of impact. That was the revelation that God gave, that this decade, starting on 1st January 2020, is a decade of impact. I want to ask you not to be passive. If you're passive, the world could sweep you away. God is looking for men who are laborers indeed. He will be trusting us and forcing us out in the space where we are going to be available to do his work. Apostle Kure raised an issue. He said, and I hope you didn't miss it. He said, God, don't allow this plague to pass until you have raised the priesthood that is needed for your work. May we be those that God is raising. May we be those who will do something new. God is raising an alternate army. Let's come out of the shells that the world has forced us into, that our careers have forced us into, and enter the realm of the divine.